Hi, my name is Eugene Rubilov and I am Product Manager for Kotlin. Every month we provide updates about Kotlin to keep you informed about the latest Kotlin news. So hit the red button and the bell to subscribe to our channel and get notification when we release a new video. And one more thing, if you enjoy what you see, don't forget to press like button and leave a comment. So, with that said, welcome to September's Kotlin News Update. I have also left links to all materials from this video here in the description, if you want to look deeper into the information. We are in the process of preparing our Kotlin Premiere online event, which will begin on October 19. In the previous online events, we usually talked about our most recent releases, but for this event we have prepared something new. The use of this word Premiere in, in the title is not accidental. This year we are focused on interesting announcements and sharing of our future plans regarding Kotlin development and ecosystem. We want to make this even more interactive for viewers and, of course, we will be offering some prizes. In addition to that, all the talks on the different topics will be distributed over several days, so you will have a chance to manage your schedule around it if there are a particular session you would like to attend online. Speaking of topics, there are talks on Kotlin and WebAssembly, the Kotlin KMM roadmap, Kator 2.0, Spring Native, a top-down view for the compiler, the brand new code coverage tool, code quality with Kodana, and of course, our keynote with secret announcements from Roman Yelizarov. So, make sure to join us on October 19. Registration is open right now. You can find a link in the description. We are looking forward to see you there. A nice indicator that we are doing things right is the number of Kotlin users. Recently, we announced how we count active users. And you know what? This amount is growing. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for promoting Kotlin in your organization, supporting the community by writing libraries and actively adopting the multi-platform. The number of Kotlin developers is growing every year. In 2021 alone, about 5 million developers have tried Kotlin, and without your support, it wouldn't be possible. While we are on topic of KMM, I'm so excited to share two important things. First of all, we know how important it is to have a working examples, and because of that, we've prepared a list of different multi-platform examples to share with you best practices and try new features. You will find a link to these examples under this video. But without support of the community, it wouldn't be possible to drive new technology, right? Uh, we've created a page that collects the amazing libraries, tools, frameworks, and much more together in one place. A huge thanks to authors of these tools and to all who contribute to KMM. Together, folks, we create the future of programming. The next update will be particularly useful and valuable for beginners in Kotlin multi-platform and experts in Android development. CampKit by TouchLab has switched to Jetpack Compose. This means no XML and hence no view and data bindings. Lazy Columns has hosted adapters and recycle view. TouchLab says this update brings more readability to the sample and expose the flow in our previous state management approach. You can find more about this and other changes in their blog post. Some of you may know how hard it is to promote and advocate new technology in your company, and Kotlin is no exception here. Recently, we ran a pilot program for server-side enthusiasts. The goal of this program 
was to advise developers on how to advocate Kotlin in their teams. We help you to find Kotlin-related materials for your specific cases and advise on the Kotlin language features, libraries, and tooling. So, if you are interested, join this program. We would be happy to help you. A couple of weeks ago, we talked to Zelanda about their experience with Kotlin. Now, the new episode of Talking Kotlin with Hadi and Sebastian has been released. In this episode, you can find out why and how Kotlin has been adopted, including questions on convincing the team, null safety benefits, and what Zalanda think about Kotlin after using it for a while. This episode may be interesting for people who are thinking about transition and looking for real use cases, or if you just want to hear how to think. Every huge milestone in the community is the win for all Kotlin. In September, Arrow reached a huge milestone with the release of version 1.0. For people who are not familiar with this library, Arrow complements the Kotlin standards and coroutines library by introducing extensions, data types, and features. It favors a declarative style of programming focused on composition and safety error handling. Computation expressions, parallel zip, traverse and sequence, and deep access to immutable data, all that and a bit more can be found in the Raoul's blog post. And finally, I cannot end our news without mentioning that KSP has reached the stable version. Let me quote you Git Bayar, Android software engineer. Adding KSP support to Room improved the compilation speed and also enabled Room to better understand Kotlin code, such as the nullability of generics that was not possible with KPT. It also unlocks new possibilities, like generating Kotlin code, which will allow Room to have a better Kotlin user experience in the future. And indeed, compared to KPT, KSP is up to times faster offers direct access to Kotlin language constructs, and the incident on the cake is that it has support for multi-platform targets. Full documentation is waiting for you on kotlinlang.org. That was a monthly Kotlin ecosystem news update. Don't forget to like this video if you found it interesting and leave your comment on what part you are excited about. As always, to be the first to get the latest Kotlin updates, subscribe to our channel by clicking the bell icon. That's all for today. See you at the Kotlin Premiere online event. Ciao!